Good day to everybody. Um, my name is Nick Vilner. I'm the director of the National Disabled Veterans Tea Tournament, the, uh, the second most important national rehab event uh, right after the Winter Sports Clinic. Um, I'm very excited to introduce you all to the, uh, to the presenters for today. Adam Greathouse and Jensen Shirley, both U.S. Army veterans here to share their stories. I had a burn, a chemical exposure that burnt and ate holes in my left lung. The general of Water Reed told my parents, you know, enjoy your time with him because, you know, with the injuries that he sustained, we're looking at 30 max. I was about 23, 24 at the time. It was about eight to 10 years of real darkness. It was a really lonely road. And uh, then I pretty much, I was it. I was living with my parents for the rest of my life because I tried to go out and live on my own independently and it didn't work. And that was a really hard time. Uh, I just started drinking a lot, and I was really, really close to checking out. I came to the Winter Sports Clinic, and it lit that pot light. And then I went from there to saying, you know, hey, there's more beyond my injury. You know, because I didn't even smile for 10 years, and now you ca I can't stop. Yeah. Woo! You come to the Winter Sports Clinic, there's no differences in disabilities. Um, it's an automatic friendship. <laughs> One, go! I got my freedom back because of the Winter Sports Clinic. Being totally independent is huge for most veterans. Awesome. Um, well, what an incredible story, Adam. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your, your journey? Uh, yes. Um, um, when I was, I was a corporal in the United States Army um, with the 3rd Infantry Division, and uh, we were deployed. And um, when we were deployed, we went to Kosovo for a K-4 mission. And um, we was over there, supposed to be a six-month tour as a couple months. And then... Um, just one morning after I came back off one of my missions, uh, I had trouble breathing. Um, I know the next day they flew me out and um, that evening I went to a coma and then uh, like two months later, I uh, woke up and then like again, I was early 20s, Rambo, bulletproof, um, so confident, proud. Um, I had a lot of courage, uh, self pride and then I woke up, um, I was 215 pounds and I woke up 110. Um, so in two months I lost all that. Uh, so I think it's like muscle atrophy. Um, like I had to learn how to walk again. Uh, that's what I say. I know it was, I had to build my muscles back and stuff. Um, so I went through that and, um, I couldn't communicate. I had a trach. I was on life support when I woke up, uh, removal, like my left lung and had uh, chest tubes in my right one. Um, I felt something going on with my throat. So I swallowed and I tried to grab for it and I couldn't move. So at that point, um, I was laying in a hospital bed, uh, just woke up like that. And uh, over time being there and then until I got back home, took a huge toll on me. Um, when I got with Walter Reed, they came in and uh, that's when pretty much my heart got ripped out of my chest. Uh, they explained to me that I wasn't a soldier anymore. And um, I was a lifer. I absolutely loved it. And then when they told me that, um, you know, I just I, I begged. I tried. I said if I could get waivers, I could do anything, you know, something. And they said no. 
Um, so that put me in a really huge spiral because uh, during the time I quit breathing so long, I have a, a brain injury. Um, so I was, it was really hard to comprehend everything that was going on and, um, and then my abilities. Uh, I was an athlete before, um, and then that was completely gone. And then can't, can't, can't. I was my wor own worst enemy. Um, and then like a year and a half or so, uh, I started self-medicating. Um, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. I want to help anybody, you know, that it can help. And I was there in a dark spot and, you know, I was, I was drinking massive amounts. Um, I mean, daily for like 10 years, uh, didn't care life out of control. Um, and then a couple of times I contemplated and then, you know, really wanted to say it like, you know, I contemplated suicide. I contemplated taking my life because if you just say end it, it don't have power. Words have power. And that's why I was that. And then I was trying to hold on. I was trying to hold on the best I could because the only thing I picked, I hated myself. I picked my children. And that's what I said. Okay, I want to make them proud. You know, I have to at least I could walk out and sit on the front porch and watch them instead of laying in bed. Um, so I, I did uh, rec therapy at the, the Huntington VA. Um, they asked me to sign up for the rec therapy department uh, to be you know, a participant. And I said no. Um, because one reason they're like, oh man, it's fun. And then it's also physically and mentally, it can help you. But, uh, veterans, they go through a significant injury. Um, sometimes we feel we don't deserve fun. We don't deserve to smile. We don't deserve to have any feelings except anger and hatred. And I felt like a, just a complete failure to my country, my unit, you know, my family. So, um, at the point of, when they finally talked me into it, I said, okay, whatever. Because I thought it was like in 2012, I don't know what I ate yesterday, but I'll never forget this. In 2012, I showed up and I was thinking quietly, no one really knew. Um, I wanted to go there just so everyone would leave me alone. And I tried it. And then I was going to come home and then I was going to be a statistic. And that's just, that's just honest truth. And I was with, let's get this week out of the way. I didn't want to go. I was all, uh, uh, I didn't really talk. I was really quiet. Um, again, hated myself. I, it could have been a beautiful July the fourth day. I seen nothing but gray, just blah. And that was for over a decade. You know, I lost that much time. I got to the winter sports clinic and then something changed. There was like a dark spot in like my chest. I was trying to self-medicate that way. Um, feeling a failure. I didn't think that all week. And I thought that for like 11 years, every day. Um, I thought sometimes I wouldn't sleep four days in a row. You know, I mean, I just had anxiety disorder with the, you know, the brain injury, lack of oxygen for um, uh, energy, I guess, with the, you know, your lung missing and stuff. So, you know, and, and I, I got there and I noticed everybody, yeah, there's disabilities, but we're all the same. And then the commodity when I got there. It was like I was my brothers and my sisters because I really didn't talk to anybody. I was a recluse and I stayed to myself. Um, I just didn't, I didn't want to enjoy life. That like lit the spark. Like, I, cause I felt like a long time I didn't have no aura, like no this. I just feel like it was just exploding out of me. I come back and when I come back, that dark spot came back. I missed all my brothers and sisters there. Plus what I did learn there, you don't go there and just like, yeah, this, we're here. You go there, all the educational stuff they're teaching you. My instructor took me out on the mountain and said, one day we're going to go down here. And I said, well, I'm not coming back. So that's okay. <laughs> but um, in 2017, he took me up to the tip top and we came down and, you know, like it, it would took baby steps. Like I look now and think, oh man, you know, I should have been like this much further. But what we learned there, you adapt you accept what's going on and then you overcome it. And then that's what I've learned at the winter sports clinic. And now um, I, I really, I didn't talk to anybody hardly for those 10, 11 years, my parents, my children, um, my girlfriend at the time, like the stuff like that. Other than that, I didn't talk to anybody. Now, you know, I can't shut up. I, I'm so confident, um, you know, I have my self-respect back. I'm really proud of myself. Um, if you'd have told me when I first went there, in 2012, I would have been, you guys need medicated. <laughs> there's no way that that's, um, no, because, you know, there's no way I can feel like that. I don't deserve it. But I really wasn't a failure. I do know, like, I was taken off my mission as a soldier. And then I found my purpose at the Winter Sports Clinic because I know 
people were saying, oh my gosh, you know your story. It's just my story. I'm just a regular West Virginia boy, but I was spared for a reason. And then I get there and, you know, I like, it's a role model. It's uh, inspiring others. And if I could do it, they could do it. And then, but it's just, you get there and you, and you can't ignore anything. You really want to do, like, I signed up for all this stuff, like all extracurricular stuff, uh, where the TBI, knowledge is power. Um, all the stuff that they were teaching me. Um, I got to like scuba dive. I live in West Virginia, so that wasn't going to happen really, but I got to do that there. And then uh, again, um, my instructor, Jim, Jim Derrick, JD, he is, he is just awesome. Um, I met him. I didn't like him. Uh, I was said, I don't want to be here. I think I went on the Skittles course when everybody that is new and hasn't participated comes. You'll understand that. Everybody's been there and knows it. I think it took me like two hours to get down there. <laughs> and I, I think it's 50 yards or 100 yards or something. I was so sore and I was over it. But like, and then that right there, I never knew that it could it bring it back. But again, adaptive sports is sports can bring people together. And then also when you get really into it, you want to physically be able to do it. So you do the best you can. I mean, we're not doing American Ninja Warrior, but, you know, we stay fit. We stay as possible, we stay physical. Um, and then again, on the mental part of it, um, this has got me where, um, you know, my parents and my children, my wife, they look at me, they're super proud. Um, they know where I've come from. They know my struggles. And now, you know, again, I'm just truly blessed to, um, had that opportunity to go to the winter sports clinic. So anybody out there like has to go into the VA, um, check into the rec therapy department. Um, if not Google it up, uh, the winter sports clinic, um, you can do your own applications without that, but, um, it's great first time to kind of have a lead. So, um, yeah, I, I just, and I could talk for five hours. Um, I do know that I speak at my VA now for patient center care. Um, and it's like teaching the staff members walking in the patient's shoes um, and let them know that this is only my, this is my story. And everybody who walks through those doors has the courage to come in and ask for help. You know, so I get to even take what I've learned at the Winter Sports Clinic and I brought it all the way back to West Virginia. And now we're doing nothing but just improving the, um, the health care for the veterans. And we're in like kind of a rural area. So, you know, it's very crucial uh, for them to understand, you know, about labor one because, when I first started, I had long hair, um, didn't care, uh, might have not slept for three or four days, came into appointment, to, and it's not, you have to watch about being labeled. So um, that was just one of the obstacles that I overcame. And then, um, and then now, you know, again, speaking at the winners or at the, um, at the patient center care, um, now I do a lot of public speaking on suicide prevention uh, because, um, you know, that's, that's just, uh, it don't need to happen once too many. So, and that all of us can take part in that. And again, where did I learn this at, you know, at the winter sports clinic, it was, we all come together and we're one team. So. Thank you so much for sharing that. And that uh, to say that's an uh, inspiring story would be an understatement. Uh, some of the comments we've gotten while you were speaking were always smiling. What an inspiration. You're amazing. So, yeah, I mean, you know that now, but I, I really thank you for taking the time to uh, to share that with us and, and for everybody on the call we will have um question and answer session towards the end of it so we'll hold those for now um i'll give you a little more information on how to ask adam and uh, and jensen some questions but thank you again adam and with that um we are going to share a short video for for jensen and his piece of, of his journey so a young sergeant uh, coming from Panama and I ended up on, as a range NCO in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, uh, teaching weapons to uh, new soldiers coming into the Army. And part of my job was to handle uh, demolitions as well. And, um, you know, we, we call it uh, hitting the wall. Uh, once, you, you know, you go down, you may never come back. And so you hit the wall. But I made it back. Uh, I'm still here, still alive, still pressing on. It is a very, very difficult transition. Uh, one, you're going from a civilian life to a military life that's regimented, that's uh, full of activity and action, uh, mostly life-threatening. And then that's what you serve as you grow and become uh, a soldier. And then uh, one day, um, you're unprepared for what faces you is the end of your military career. This event is very important, it really is. Um, you come here and you 
meet new people, you meet new soldiers who have gone through some of the very difficult challenges that we face, both mentally and physically. And then you realize that you're not alone. You know, so often in civilian life, after the military, you know that no one understands. And then you come here and you see your brothers and your sisters and you see the difficulties that they had to overcome and how they inspire you just to continue to do more and more and more. It's truly a miracle, one, that we're still here. It's another miracle that we continue to press on and to strive and to go forward. And if anything, what I, I want people to understand is that we don't come here looking for a hand out or a hand up. We come here to demonstrate that our service is not over. We've served and sacrificed for this great country of ours. And now we're serving and sacrificed for each other. And oh, what a journey. Oh, what a life. And I'm just glad that I'm still here. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that uh, video and that inspiring story, uh, Jensen. And with that, I, I turn the, the stage over to you to, to tell us more about yourself and your journey. All right. Thank you so much. I really uh, appreciate this and I appreciate following Adam because through his struggles and purpose and life, it reminds me that we are brothers and uh, we're all in this together. Uh, my name is Jensen Shirley and I'm a, a Vietnam era veteran. I'm a former Sergeant United States Army Infantry, 11 Bravo, as you saw in the video. My last duty assignment was as a weapons instructor where I taught combat arms skills to basic trainees. Uh, I was a range instructor teaching the M72A2 light and a tank weapon, which was a one shot 66 millimeter unguided missile and a tank weapon. I also taught the Claymore and a personnel device and other infantry weapon. I can say that my military experience was very I operated at the squad, platoon, and company level. Although my military career was cut short due to my tragic injury, nonetheless, I would not trade it like Adam said. I would not trade it for the world. I attended uh, many um, schools and academies, and I deployed overseas to Panama and enjoyed several leadership positions that served me well throughout my life. Like most veterans, I do not talk much about my injuries, suffice to say. That is behind me. But I will say my injuries are legion, which includes internal, external injuries, amputations, burns, cervical spine injuries, vision injuries, severe hearing loss, to name just a few. My rehabilitation has been long and an enduring process. Suffice to say, it was military men and women that dealt with and stabilized my mangled body. And for that, I am forever grateful. Like Adam, I too was shipped to Walter Reed Medical Center for additional surgery and recovery and rehabilitation. I think I was at Walter Reed for 16 months, 18 months before being discharged to begin my life as a wounded veteran with, with no hands. Like my veteran brother, Adam, I suffered from mental health recovery. I too was an alcoholic. It was an aspect of my life and my journey that was traumatic and difficult, as well as the physical recovery. It has been tough over these years. It was challenging, but I find that impossible to overcome. It was a grind, uh, mostly through isolation and loneliness that overwhelmed me so much during my time. You look around and there is no one here but you, like you, and only you. 
even when family members try to help, they cannot understand because they have not been through what you've been through. They have not lost what you have lost. They have not endured the pain and the suffering that you're going through. You work with clinicians at the VA and social workers, physical rehab specialists, occupational rehab specialists, prosthetic specialists, and other departments that are there to help you. These clinicians can help your body to heal, but oh, not your mind and your spirit. That we must do on our own. And then one day, someone asks, have you been to the mountain? You don't know how to respond because you don't know what the question is. For me, that person was Gail Gray, spinal cord injury person or specialist who helped those who suffered sp severe spinal cord injuries. I was a regular attendee at the Prosthetic Rehabilita Rehabilitation Clinic at La Jolla VA Medical Center. And one day, Gail attended that same clinic in San Diego. And she asked me, have you heard about the disabled veterans went to sports clinic? My response was, what is that? <laughs> well, that was my beginning of a brand new chapter in my rehabilitative journey. Gail talked to me about the Winter Sports Clinic, its program, its content. She talked to me and told me about the participants, but also she told me about the work that was required. Gail said, Jensen, it is so much fun, but also challenging and demanding. There is pre-event work, rehabilitative training work, exercise preparation. There's a preparation attending the clinic. Yes, it is fun, but, th but there's work and homework. And she warned me and said that everyone participate. You will not sit on the sideline. You must participate. It is a participation that is socially challenging after years of isolation, it's so scary. It was scary to me. But there is the process of making and meeting new friends, like Adam said. It is a departure from sitting home. There is a renewed spirit, rather, that I cannot explain. But you remember the adage, there is no atheist, there are no atheists in foxholes. So here in Snowmass, there is no isolation or loneliness on this mountain. You will ski. No such thing as you cannot. You will play hockey, if you, even if you're in a wheelchair. You will bowl even if you don't have any hands like me. You may go swimming outside in the warm springs where the temperatures are low 30 degrees above zero. No one here is a victim, especially those that take self-defense classes. That's right. You will take self-defense classes if you so choose. As Adam said, my, my colleague said, and my veteran brother said, there are educational seminars, there's rock climbing, there are meetings from early morning to late afternoon. My experience at the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic is like no other. I was afraid, I will admit, I was excited, concerned, yet challenged, challenged, and so thrilled, to say the least. There are clinicians here and hundreds of people assigned to your care and to your service that are here for you. 
my training leaders like David and Suzanne. I can't explain how much I learned to love them, to listen to them, and to care with them. The impact on my life has been no other. I look forward to attending each and every year, which requires me to stay in shape and stay active. My quality of life have improved. Every person's goals are unique to them and their disability and so to their journey. Remember, there is no shame in saying you are disabled. But you leave here, you will be able to meet your goals and enhance your life's purpose and press on. Your journey through life has encompassed many ups and downs. You've had many disappointments, but you have overcome, right? I don't know what you've lost, but I know that when you come here, you will find it. You will become new again. There are obstacles at snow mass that are both external and internal. There is a change in the weather conditions that can impact some activities. So what do you do? You go with the flow. <laughs> some of you may develop a fever or need medical attention. If you forget your pills, there's a pharmacy available that will provide you with a temporary supply of medicine. While you may come prepared, there are always the unforeseen circumstances. But you will be assigned team. You will compete. You will be ready. Your teams will help motivate you to get back up and get on that mountain again. It will require determination, dedication, discipline, but you can succeed if you practice and persevere. So why do I come back year after year after year? I keep seeing old friends. I make new friends. I personally grow both mentally and physically. <clears throat> My associates call me Dr. Shirley, as I'm a registered mental health practitioner, albeit with no hands. Those unknown to me call me Mr. Shirley. However, my friends, like Adam and others, on Snowmass, which means all of you will call me Jensen. Once you are there, you will see what I've known all along. It is a life-changing experience like no other. I will see you on top of the mountain. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you both for uh, making my job a lot easier. I was worried I would have to uh, interject for time purposes because I could have listened to Adam for five hours, like he said, and, and Jensen, I could have listened to you for five hours too. Um, so in inspiring isn't a, isn't the right word. I, I'm not uh, not as articulate as I need to be to find a, a word better than that. But th thank you so much for sharing your stories. Um, thank you so much for your service. Um, to the country and, and like you said to each other now. Um, I'd like to let everyone know on the on the call that if you have questions, if you're on the web platform on the internet, you can use uh, the raise hand function in the chat box. If you're on your phone, if you would just type your name in the chat box, we can start um, looking for questions uh, that anybody has for, for Adam or Jensen. Um, We'll give we'll give a minute um, to see if we have any. Thank you, thank you both again. Totally an honor. Thank you guys for having me. We've got a raised hand 
uh, in the chat box. Uh, if we could get Joe unmuted, he can ask away. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I, uh, well, I just want to say I'm, I'm, uh, I, I am a excited person. I love to go to the winter games. And also, uh, I, I didn't miss the first. I miss Adam, but I know Jetson. And he was, uh, when I first I met him out there, and every year we talk all the time, and he did an outstanding job today. And, and that should encourage other veterans to come out and join us on the mountain, too, because it makes a difference in our lives. And thank you for that, Jetson. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Joe. I really, I really appreciate that. I know Joe very well. I met him at the clinic. In fact, uh, uh, he 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 kind of observed, or at least knew that I was afraid. Didn't know what to say. Didn't know what to do. And and it's almost like he took me by the hand and it just led me through it all. And and I am I am so blessed to have had and meet and met people like Joe and so many others. And and that's what the Winter Sports Clinic is about. It's about us not feeling isolated, us not feeling alone, us meeting people like Adam and Joe, knowing what they've been through. And so you feel comfortable sharing with them what you've gone through. And like Teresa says, it is a journey. It's not just an event. It's not a place to come. It is a journey to belong to this club of people who have welcomed you in. And I look forward to it each and every year. You know, I, I, I do talk too much sometimes and I, I take over. I, I, was a, I, I was a professor and, and I was a lot of things. But like Adam said, that transition from being a soldier to a civilian is so scary. And then we come to snowman. And it's almost, and Adam can, can say something about this, it's almost like coming home again, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. As soon as I landed, I got off the plane, you know, that that dark spot, that coldness, it went away. You know, I was I was in a in Snowmass Village with just everyone was like me. There was no <laughs> no judgments, no whatsoever. Oh, hey, go ahead, man, you know, this and that. And and, and I, I loved it because when I first went, I can't remember names and stuff like that. So I'm like, oh, hey, Boston. Hey, Miami. You know, I know the teams. I mean, it's crazy. They bring massive amounts of people. But and that's how you create the friends and the, and the networking and the, and the camaraderie and, and all that helps with mentally. I mean, you have to do the physical stuff on your own, though. But when you get mentally set, um, that is a foundation for you to start, you know, physically. So um, it's a this clinic is a lifesaver. I mean, it changes lives, but it also saves lives. I mean, yes. and yes. that's that's fact. So, you know, it's just, I love it so much. I can't wait to get back. <laughs> well, that That is awesome. We have uh, a couple uh, statements that came up and questions that came up in the chat box. And this is Johnny Andrew Felix to Jensen. This was awe-inspiring to say the least. We're getting to have a little bit of a, of a common theme here for you two. Um, I can relate uh, to the mountain, my man, well said, my brother. That was from John Andrew Felix to Jensen. And Adam, we have a question for you. Um, first off, it was thank you um, for sharing. Um, if I'm talking to someone that is in a discouraged state that you described, what is the most important thing I can say to someone that is at the end of their rope? Um, and that is from Peter Axelson. When I was at the end of my rope, um, you know, some people, unfortunately, don't have a solid, like, outside of the VA or wherever you get your care, like a support group, um, just family support, what have you. Um, my mother stepped in, and, um, you know, she said, you you know, you're too young to, to, to live in, in a safety bubble, living in bed all the time, you know, this and that. But again, I hated myself. I was a failure. I was a burden. And that's 150% how I felt and believed. So my mom said, you have to pick something. Do it for yourself. If you hate yourself, you're not going to do nothing for yourself. Um, and that's just how I felt. So she explained to me, hey, you have, you know, three children. And this is a small town. And if you're thinking about doing what you're doing, imagine the devastation that you would leave on your children. 
So the only thing I did is I grabbed a hold of that and then I attempted the winter sports clinic, not knowing, but I had to do, pick something to strive for. I couldn't pick anything in the whole world. I, I picked my children. So uh, my, my, my thing would be whatever means the most to you at this point in time, you have to grab onto it and you want to make them proud. I mean, you know where you're at. There's nowhere to go except up. Um, again, baby steps. But if you, you know, try to get them into the winter sports clinic, because as soon as you get that, it's just, it's on you. And that miracle's on the mountainside. I don't, I mean, that's, again, an understatement. It's just, um, but it's a good, it's a good saying. <laughs> I don't know what to replace it with, but um, <laughs> yeah, you just have to grab onto something that, you know, even when you don't like yourself, whatever you love, you have to grab onto that. And then, and then, and then it, it, the ball will start rolling. And then if you get to the winter sports clinic, you learn all the stuff that you need to do. I call it like it's a mental health tool bag. It's invisible. I have it with me everywhere I go. Because if you're going to fix a light switch, you have a hammer. That's not going to work. And when you do your mental health, like I go to the VA when I do that mental health wise, you know, I'm learning these tools and I'm like taking it like a sponge and I'm taking it with me. So if I come to an issue that is too overwhelming, what have you, you know, I have the right tool. For the so for the right situation. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Um, yeah, I want to make sure I'm not missing any questions here. People are. Everybody keeps saying you're so inspirational and motivational and amazing. Just I don't know. I you let me know if you get sick of hearing that because people are saying they left and right. <laughs> I, I, think like it's I think it's interesting that both of you described yourself as quiet or introverted or because. <laughs> I, we got a whole slew <laughs> of people who want to listen to you talk all day. So. <laughs> right now, yeah. <laughs> well, 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 we are, and I was until until I met Adam and Joe and 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 so many others, and and it's um, you know, it, it it's hard to describe, but if you think about sort of the metaphor of the mountain, you think there's a mountain, and then there's always a valley, right? You know, and if, and if you think of the metaphor to your life, it's like we're always in the valley, like Adam said, searching to grab hold of something to get out. We're isolated. We're feeling bad. We we don't know what to say. We don't want. We don't know what to do. We're feeling lonely. We, and then you go to this place that allows you to get up, right? Allows you to get up and to hang on to someone else. <laughs> you know, as you're climbing that mountain. You know, yeah, there are activities like snowshoeing and cross-country skiing, but it's always a challenge to do something. And that's that inner spark, I think, I think Adam said that 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 is in all of us, that that we once had, that we sort of shut the door and closed it. And but now when you get here, this door is open for you to be you, to go back and grab hold of the old you and know that. You are renewed in spirit and in mind. Physically, you're going to be challenged climbing that mountain, right? Right? Climbing that that hilltop. And then, and Adam can 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 can, can, co can sort of talk about this. When you get to the top of that mountain and you look over, it's like, oh my gosh, it's a feeling. That you that, that you will never get again until you come back, right? You know, I've got a great question that just came in on the chat box for both of you. Um, what do you do during the year to to stay motivated? Hmm. Well, I, I'll answer that because Adam knows I love to talk. He he just wants you to be quiet to give him a chance. That's all. So <laughs> so so. so so, but but think about this, and, and, and Teresa wants, wants everybody to know, <clears throat> it is an event, right? It is a place, it's a week-long thing, but it's a challenge. So you have to be physically prepared when you get here, not only mentally prepared, but physically prepared. So what we do during the year is I walk, I try to keep my weight in line. When, when swimming was available to me, I swim like Adam, I lost a lung. So it, 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 it's hard for me to breathe. So I go swimming when I can to keep in shape. You must prepare for it. But think about the journey that you're going to just to get there. 
that's helping you not only mentally, but also physically. So when you get there and you go through the process of, of climbing the mountain, you go through the process of, of, of scuba diving, like, like Adam said, you go through a process of snowshoeing and cross-country skiing, you are physically able to endure because you have persevered during the year to exercise when you get there. Okay, Adam, I'll shut up. I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're doing great, man. You're doing great. I just didn't want to see Teresa in the back going. So, <laughs> I even had a timer on my phone. I'm, I'm keeping it out when I talk. I hit yeah, a timer because I'm we are, we are getting we are getting close. So Adam, right. I'll, I'll let, let you go. Um, how I stay uh, motivated during the year is again, like at the Winter Sports Clinic. You know, I learned about um, like the kayaking. Um, I used to do kayaking before, but again, after the injury, you know, I wasn't an athlete. I wasn't a soldier. I was nobody. Um, so when I'm at the Winter Sports Clinic, you know, they they kind of um, you know, put it out there that you could do kayak. And I was like, oh, you know, let me try that. So I came home because again, when you go to these events, you go to the clinics, they teach you stuff. They're teaching you to be independent. So when I came home, I didn't want to wait for another year or another six months for another event clinic to open up. I bought a kayak and I just started kayaking. So what I thought is winter time, I've learned from snowboarding at the winter sports clinic. So I brought that home and the winter months, if I'm physical and have stuff to do and I want to go do something to, and, and do that, I, I can go snowboard. In the summertime and warmer month, you know, I can go kayaking, you can go paddleboarding. There's just various stuff that you do. Um, I wouldn't pick one thing. I, I walk. Um, I, I, I don't run anymore. I can't, but I adapted, so I'm all walk. <laughs> so, um, you know, like that's just, that's what I do. Um, just the free weights, like the weight lifted just a little bit. Um, Nothing crazy, just again, because when I prepare myself for this event yearly, um, I continue everything else I do is great and it's helping me out. But I'm my long term. I look this is I look forward to this is because this is a reunion. Yes. So that's what I do. I just stay at everything that you could possibly do. Walk, uh, kayak, any kind of water. Again, water's healing. So, I mean, you can't lose there. Well. Thank you both. I am now the least popular uh, man in America saying that our session has ended. So uh, that went incredibly fast. I would like to uh, point out that Teresa should have known better than only having this be 45 minutes long. Because we did have this <laughs> Thanks to you both. <laughs> yeah. I, and I'm of course, of course, teasing Teresa, but no, thank you. Thank you both so much. Thank you everyone for joining our first Overcoming Obstacles, uh, the veteran testimonials from Service to Slopes. Um, if you have any questions that can be answered, please email Teresa Parks at Teresa.parks at va.gov. Um, thank you both Adam um, and Jensen and everyone who participated. Uh, what, a, what an invigorating session. Uh, seriously, thank you all so much. And uh, hope we get to cross paths again very soon on the next session. All right. Hey, thanks, everybody. Truly an honor.